If you're a product leader, it's very likely you're facing a critical inflection point with AI. Those who understand what's coming in 2025 will create category-defining products, while others might have to risk it elements. The Neural has put this video together to share exclusive insights from product leaders at Meta, Salesforce, Skyflow, Tata Communications, who are reimagining product development with AI. This isn't about far future possibilities, it's about concrete product and skilling decisions to stay ahead in the next 12 months. Your product roadmap, can't afford to miss this. Um, the way I look at it is um, all of us are talking Gen AI, all of us are talking chat GPT, we keep hearing about DeepSeek and everything. But if you really think of the three key building blocks that have come. Regulators, companies and users to ensure there is fairness and, you know, also to kind of mitigate bias in AI systems. Um, I think as the scope of AI widens, you know, there are certain skills and, you know, and in the topics that the product managers and the product leaders to, you know, focus on in, in 2025. So what are that, right? But so, I think 2025 will be a critical year for enterprises and, and large organizations when they're trying to find a balance between. Welcome to the Neural Talks your gateway to the forefront of AI innovation. I'm your host, Ranjit Malarkot, and together we'll explore the AI revolution with the brightest minds pushing boundaries and shaping the future. Through candid conversations, they share hard-won insights as we unlock the transformative power of AI. Get informed, get inspired. This is the future, and you're in the front row. Awesome. Uh, it's good to be here. Talk about uh, one of my favorite topics. Been dabbling into AI for a large part of my career, but uh, now is the most interesting times. I think uh, two years ago, ChatGPT came in and then changed the world. Um, the way I look at it is um, all of us are talking Gen AI. All of us are talking ChatGPT. We keep hearing about DeepSeek and everything. But if you really think of the three key building blocks that have come, it's models, it's applications, and it's agents. So when we think of what's happening in 2025, you can think of the growth from a standpoint of early on the models came in, uh, chat GPT, you had Llama, you had so many different foundation models come in. Then we had applications that were built on top of the models that took in action and uh, you know users were using the applications to do something. And in 2025, it's actually going to go from that assistive approach of applications to an autonomous world. We are going to start seeing a lot of agents. We are starting to hear about agentic AI that uh, don't just, you know, suggest your next steps, but they're actually executing workflows. So that's a big trend that we're going to start seeing in 2025 with minimal human intervention. And um, AI regulation and enforcement is also going to start coming in because we are now getting out of the world of POCs into production. So as we get into 2025 and further, we'll see that large companies who are starting to adapt AI, agentic AI applications into their workflows can't ignore compliance. Um, you know, if you think of cross-border data transfers and working with health data, working with proprietary data uh, in these models, that's not no longer going to be um, something we can ignore. Um, some of the other things I would say um, we are going to see a lot of is AI trust and adoption might potentially become a big competitive advantage. And when we think of that and we start thinking of AI taking actions autonomously for product, you know, professionals or product managers, product leaders, I would say I call it, you know, AI native thinking. So you want to take first principles thinking to all your problem rather than just attaching AI on top of what you're doing. Look at the problem statement, step back from first principles and think of what are you going to do? How are you going to build this using the tools that you have today available to you with AI? And I, I know there might be a little bit of bias based on, you know, what I think of every morning, noon and night, but I feel like security and compliance is going to be a key product differentiator for anyone building anything on AI. And, you know, world is your oyster. I would say every product person needs to start experimenting. If you're not using AI today, use it day to day, get familiarized with every tool that's out there, how it works, how it's going to work, know the trends, get become part of any community. There are Reddit communities, GitHub communities, LinkedIn, 
just get in the know and just absorb, 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 absorb and use it. And that's, um, that's going to make it a very exciting 2025. Uh, um, for AI industry, I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is the balance between governance and uh, possibilities. AI has shown us that there are literally infinite possibilities when it comes to building products uh, and services. But I think 2025 will be a critical year for enterprises and, and large organizations when they're trying to find a balance between governance, regulation, and the potential of AI. We're already seeing uh, various acts, EU AI Act. We've seen uh, a free AI Act uh, with enacted by RBI in India. And there's many more to come. So how leaders uh, and organizations uh, manage this transition is going to be critical. The other one we're going to see in 2025 is the emergence of chief AI officers. And uh, they're going to have a seat at the table and in a way that CTOs and, and CDOs before them did. And I think this is going to be critical. We're already seeing this in several Fortune 500 organizations, but it's going to become pervasive. The third, I would say, is um you know data sovereignty and data privacy right so how do organizations manage data sovereignty data privacy and juxtapose that against a ai privacy uh, is something uh, a lot of organizations are figuring it out and working closely with uh, legal and compliance and other teams to ensure that from an impact perspective for product leaders i would say there are a few things that come to mind on on the professional side obviously um your leadership and and your ceos and the board are looking for ROI on the AI investments, not just Gen AI, but AI investments that have been made in the past as well. So I think it's really time to roll up your sleeves, work with your customers and stakeholders, and really ensure that there is some return on investment or there's a line line of sight towards that, uh, so that continued investments can be can be made. Um, this is a capital intensive area, so it's going to need that um, focus on ROI. On a personal slide. I would say the focus is on um, upskilling yourselves and building your own AI stack and so that you can stay stay relevant and scale yourselves. From a skill perspective, uh, I would say for AI leaders, it's really important to build future forward in AI ready uh, teams and really take them to the next level. So let me start by telling a story here, right? Um, so our generation you know, remembers the prominent uh, dot-com failures in, in 2000, you know, during the dot-com bubble burst, right? So if you ask this generation, what is the one thing that stands out among many in the technology innovation, that will be November 30th, 2022. What happened that day, right? So that was the time ChatGPT came alive, right? So over the years, uh, what you know the researchers have do really done is so they have developed advanced frameworks that allow you know LLM to take decisions and execute actions and not just the text generation you know using the LLM. Right? So this this actually leads to the concept of what we really call it as you know AI agents, right? So literally we have transformed from a conventional chatbots to AI agents today in 2025. So AI agents are going to be the year of 2025. Every industry it's going to adopt AI very widely and agents would be an integral part of their organization business workflow. Okay, so that's going to be a major transformation which is going to happen for this year. So I have already seen major enterprises and big companies are really chasing and defining the AI use cases and it is starting with the customer service as the primary focus for you know them today followed by you know every other business processes okay so with all of this you know happening today you know i see some of the specific item that's going to have a really high impact you know for ourselves right so in the era of agents the rise of AI product managers is going to be inevitable, right? So, he will be the, you know, still the interlock for everyone in the enterprise companies who identifies opportunities in the context of agents on how to create value, design the product and ensure that it is still aligned with the business goals and the user needs are met. 
okay so the ai product manager will act as a translator between the world of business and ai possibilities orchestrating ai innovation right so in summary developing and bringing the agents to life to solve a business problem will have a very high impact on product manager's professional as well as his personal life Right. So for that to be, you know, scale up with that level of, you know, the disruption which is happening, you know, there are certain skills and, you know, and in the topics that the product managers and the product leaders to, you know, focus on in, in 2025. So what are that, right? So to be successful in AI product management, my suggestion is to start with learning the foundation such as what is machine learning? What are the different models that exist today? What is LLM? What is prompt engineering, right? So the prompt engineering to understand the different types of prompts and so on and so forth, right? So this is going to be a primary foundational skills for, you know, the product leaders and product managers to learn, right? I would also try them by myself to understand the nuances. Guess what? With the open AI, you know, a playground that exists today, you could do a lot of stuff that was impossible earlier. So these technical skills will allow me to, you know, push my boundary beyond what problem I want to solve for my business. So at the end of the day, you would be solving a business problem using AI technology. So you should be skilled enough to create that connection, you know, between AI possibilities and the business problem. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm super excited to kind of share my point of view um, through this video. Um, 2024 has been like an exciting year for everyone. For everyone, um, and 2025 is probably going to uh, kind of test new uh, limits of what AI and ML can offer to businesses in general. Um, some of the milestones that I'm really excited for and looking forward to as a product manager is, uh, you know, the continued focus on making model performance uh, even more robust. Right, like we're already seeing how DeepSeek is kind of, um, you know, uh, giving a run for some of the uh, open AI models. So I'll expect more and more iterations of such models. Um, and, you know, a company is going to become uh, more performant, focus on more efficient setups in kind of delivering that better performance. Um, I'm also very passionate about like just the importance of ethics in AI. I think this will be key talk topic of discussion between regulators, companies and users to ensure there is fairness and, you know, also to kind of mitigate bias in AI systems. Um, I think as the scope of AI widens, uh, there will be increased increased scrutiny on accountability and transparency in AI decision making. Um, at the same time, um, you know, we know uh, how Chad GPT-1 model was super popular when it was launched in 2021. I think it's going to be interesting this year in terms of how the open source models are going to fare with some of these closed architectures, right? So we know that uh, Meta's Llama is getting uh, super popular. So companies are going to be sensitive to short term and long term co cost of building and maintaining such LLM models. Um, I suspect that some of the open source models like Llama and BERT uh, are going to be attractive, especially for companies uh, in terms of how they can crack A and ML to kind of serve their business better. Now, as product leaders and product managers, right? What should we be doing kind of thinking about 2025, right? Um, from my perspective, there are two things, right? One is I think every product leader is going to incorporate AI or ML uh, into their products eventually. So think of this as the internet in the 1990s, right? Um, there are some businesses that said, no, internet is not going to help me and some embraced it. And we all know the businesses that have embraced it have sort of taken a leap in terms of their growth and whatnot. Right? So again, as product leaders, I would urge us all to think about how AI ML can really solve a customer problems or kind of help us to think out of the box uh, and really kind of drive that sort of the S curve to a product growth in general, right? And lastly, as product leaders, um, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to get to the basics of AI. Um, this includes uh, familiarizing oneself with the popular AI tools, framework, uh, continue to collect and analyze uh, large data sets uh, and kind of make product decisions. Finally, I would just leave with one closing thought. Be comfortable with AI. And this is where the opportunities are going to be for the long term uh, for you as a product manager and also for your customers um, that use your products. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Neural Talks. Hit subscribe or follow us on LinkedIn to stay informed of many more great episodes on AI coming up. We're the Neural, where humans meet AI.